A portion of this video has been sponsored by Onshape. This is a 3D printed motor I designed completely from scratch. In this video, I'm gonna show you the process of building it, measuring its power output, and even testing it underwater. So to start, let's look at a normal off-the-shelf brushless DC motor. These things are awesome. They have a ton of power and they're actually pretty efficient. Looking inside, we can see that there are magnets around the outside, which are called poles. And then there's a stator in the center, which has slots for wire to be wrapped around. When powers run through the windings of the stator, it creates an electromagnetic field, which acts against the magnets around the outside. This makes the motor spin. Pretty cool, right? So this is my first time ever designing a motor from scratch. So I decided to just jump right in. So I opened up Onshape and started modeling. The design I settled on has 20 poles and 24 slots. Pretty much every part of this motor was designed to be 3D printed. So with the design done, all I have to do now is wait. The majority of the parts are just made from standard PLA plus. And then I printed the stator core from this iron filled PLA. Having some amount of iron in the stator should increase the performance of the motor. This plastic also just has like an awesome finish to it. I also decided to print the outer housing of the motor from clear resin. I printed this out on my Formlabs Form 3 and it turned out awesome. The clear resin means we'll be able to see inside the motor, which should be really interesting. To build this yourself though, you don't need a resin printer. I also did a version where I just printed it at a PLA Plus and it worked great. The first step to assembly is also unfortunately the hardest step and that's winding the stator. I use 22 gauge enameled copper wire and each slot gets 20 turns of wire. This takes a ton of patience and ends up hurting your fingers a lot but in the end, it actually looks pretty cool. The winding pattern I used looked like this, and I'll put a link in the description below to the website I used that gives you the winding pattern for any combination of poles and slots. With the motor wound, the center pieces can get added, which clamp down on the stator. I used heat set inserts to make sure the motor could be mounted really easily, and then the other half of the center section gets added and clamps together with some bolts. Next up, we need to add magnets. These are very easy to install, and they very satisfyingly slide into pockets around the perimeter of the outer housing. They need to be added in alternating directions, so they need to alternate north-south, 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 all the way around. Once these are added, we can actually use a piece of this magnet paper to visualize the magnetic fields. This looks pretty cool, and in my case, it actually showed me that one of the magnets was a little bit weaker than the others. So I swapped out that magnet for a different one just to make sure everything was symmetric. All right, that looks way better. With that, everything's actually ready to go. The stator gets installed into the outer housing, and then the base of the motor just threads on. To run this motor, you can just use a normal hobby ESC, and powering it up shows that this thing actually spins. The CAD files for this motor can be found using the link in the description below completely for free. And you get access to my entire CAD file, even like the sketches, all thanks to Onshape, who is also the sponsor of this video. If you haven't used Onshape before, it's an entirely cloud-native CAD platform. I've been using it for almost a year now exclusively, and it's been amazing. It has all the features you need to create really complex designs, and it streamlines the whole process since there's no more clunky files and things like that. It also has really robust version control, and you can kind of fork different designs and create new ones, kind of like you do on GitHub. The best part is there's tons of plugins that are created by either Onshape or by the community, which allows you to further streamline a lot of your CAD processes. One of my favorites is this airfoil generator and it has saved me a ton of time in the past and more features and things like this get added every day. The other really cool thing about Onshape is you can collaborate with other people live. Multiple people can be editing a design at once, which makes CAD truly collaborative for once, which is crazy. Onshape is totally free to use, so check out the link in the description below and use it for your next project. All right, so we have a motor and it does spin, but there's really no way to attach anything to it. To solve this, I'm gonna machine a piece from this aluminum. Recently, I connected with the team over at Carbide 3D and they sent over one of their Shapoko 5 CNC routers. This thing is definitely an upgrade of my last CNC router, which I did completely from scratch. It showed up in these two giant boxes and assembling this thing was actually really straightforward. I even built this rolling table to put it on and store all the accessories and things like that inside. The Shapeoko 5 has a lot of really nice features which I didn't have in my previous router, like an automatic bit height setter and really good dust collection. These have been total game changers for using a CNC router. 
Using it to cut my part out for this project, it had no problem with the aluminum. And I was taking it pretty easy on the feeds and speeds, so I'm excited to ramp it up and see what this thing really has in future projects. Now the part we made here is just going to attach to the front of the motor. If you FDM print the outer housing, you can then use heat stake inserts to attach things. But since I resin printed the outer housing, I used a tap to create some threaded holes. Then using some M5 bolts, I attached the plate. I then added a propeller to this to see how much thrust it can make and attached it all using a cap and some M3 screws. Everything is now really secure and I'm very happy with how this thing turned out. But before we find out how much thrust it can make, let's see how it works underwater. BLDC motors, as a rule of thumb, have no issues operating underwater. And this motor is no exception. Putting it into a tub of water, it turns on no problem, and I even let it run for a couple hours and there was no issues. But I want to do a little more extreme testing, and that's where this comes in. It's an underwater drone called the Feefish V Evo. This thing is awesome, and they sent it over a couple months ago so I could do some projects with it. My goal is to mount the motor to this drone, and then take it as deep underwater as I can go. So I use my biggest 3D printer to create this giant arm, which will attach the motor to the V Evo. Now this is great, but we need some way to power the motor. So I used a piece of PVC pipe and cut it down to length to create an electronics pod. I drilled a hole in an end cap and then passed some ESC wires through and then filled it all with epoxy to seal it. After it dried, everything could get glued together, and this should give us a waterproof connection. At least hopefully. The other end just gets sealed with one of these expandable caps. Once it gets down to the depth, there should be about 40 psi of pressure trying to get into this pod, so hopefully it stays sealed. This electronics pod then gets attached to the bottom of the arm using good old fashioned zip ties. The next day, I took this thing out to a local lake, and I used my kayak to get out to what I think is the deepest spot. All right, now, according to some random depth map I found, there should be about 110 feet of water below us. So let's put the submarine in and see how deep the motor will make it. This is our, our setup here. We got it out in front of the submarine, the Feefish V Evo. I don't know what would prevent this from working unless the electronics get wet. Let's give it a shot. Since this drone operates underwater, it uses this long tether to attach the vehicle to the controller. Alrighty, now I just gotta turn the motor on. So inside this tube I've got a battery, a servo tester, and an ESC, all which should power this motor for the whole time, hopefully. After wrestling with the electronics a bit, I spun up the motor and we were ready to go. Sticking a GoPro underwater, this whole setup just looks awesome. And the V Evo had no problem staying stable, even with all the extra weight I added. I was a little worried about the electronics pod getting wet, so I told the sub to dive as quick as possible. All right, we gotta go fast. Dive, 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 dive. Four feet, six feet, nine feet, 11 feet, 13 feet. We'll go before it stops. 17 feet, 19 feet. 22, 24, 25, 27, 30 feet. That's pretty deep, 30 feet. 40 feet deep. It is now pitch black, look at that. That is crazy. I wonder if we'll see any weird animals. Probably not. Right? 50 feet deep. All right, GoPro is overheated. We're down to 50 feet, we're gonna go fast. Everything is breaking here. 54 feet, 55 feet, 58 feet, 60 feet, 61. This is actually so crazy. <laughs> 65 feet, 70 feet, 71, 73, 75. All right, the GoPro keeps overheating, but we're at 88 feet and we're still going down. Just like 20 more feet to go. 90, 94, got light for some reason. I guess it's because we're close to the bottom. Some reflections off the bottom, I guess. 
All right, I'm at 99 feet and I just hit the bottom. I think that's as deep as it goes. Yeah, I'm stirring up a whole bunch of mud down at the bottom. We're so close to 100. I feel like it's close enough to round up, right? Overall, I thought this was a really cool test of the motor. I'm not really sure what it proves, but stuff like this is just fun, so why not? All right, it should be popping up here any second. Oh, there it is. <laughs> if you're looking for more data-driven testing, I also created this test rig. This setup uses two load cells, one to measure thrust and one to measure torque. Additionally, it uses a microcontroller to count every time a magnet passes a hall sensor. This allows me to calculate the RPM of the motor. Using a voltage divider circuit, I can measure the voltage of the battery, and then I also use a shunt resistor to measure the current being pulled by the ESC and motor. All of this data is then recorded 80 times a second, and it will allow us to calculate the power output and efficiency of the motor. This setup is basically just a dynamometer, and is pretty much what everyone uses to classify the performance of motors. So I threw this test stand in my backyard, and I think we're ready to see what this motor can really do. So with this setup, the motor only output about 25 watts of power. This is definitely a lot less than I was hoping for, and I think it's certainly capable of doing more. I'm thinking a different winding pattern or maybe something like a Halbach array for the magnets would help. I did also do a test winding the core with two wires in parallel with half as many turns. And this setup definitely generated more power at 75 watts, but still not as much as I was hoping. Even though the setup made more power, the stator also got really hot because there was less resistance, and the core pretty much started melting and the whole thing kind of got welded together. That's not good. So that winding layout really doesn't work. I would love to hear what suggestions you guys have for making this a better performing motor. I definitely plan on continuing to iterate on this design because I think it's a good starting point. So leave a comment below if you have any suggestions, and be sure to subscribe for more, and I will see you guys in the next one.